For more videos on people's struggles, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hello and welcome to People's Dispatch. Italy has been one of the countries most hit by the COVID-19 pandemic outbreak. The total number of cases is almost 25,000 and the death toll has cost 1,800. The entire country has gone into an unprecedented lockdown, even as we are seeing great gestures of solidarity among the people there. To talk more about the situation, we have with us Giuliano Granato, member of the National Coordination of the leftist political organization, Potere al Popolo. Thank you so much, Giuliano, for joining us. Thanks to you. Bye, everyone. Hi, everyone. Uh, great to hear from you, especially at this difficult time. So first of all, could you tell us a bit about what uh, the situation is on the ground right now, where you are? What is the kind of uh, shutdowns that are happening? What is the kind of social situation there? Um, well, the situation is quite difficult. We are living difficult times, uh, especially from a week on. The situation started to be very serious just in the, in the northern of Italy, especially in Lombardia, that is the richest region uh, uh, in Italy. But after a few days, uh, the situation right now is very critical uh, all over the country. Right. Uh, the whole, the whole country, the whole Italy, is right now a red zone. It means that we are closed, we are locked in our houses. For example, I'm here uh, in my house in Napoli and I cannot go out. Um, I can just uh, go out to buy food at supermarkets or to, I, I can go to, to work. The situation uh, is that every, quite, ma many businesses are closed right now because of the uh, decree of the government. And the Italian government um, signed a few degrees. In, in a week, they signed a, something like three, four degrees, uh, the decrees, um, in stating that uh, many non-essential business has to be, have to be closed. The problem is that while uh, shops uh, and a few small businesses are closed, many large factories are still open and many millions of workers uh, are compelled or obliged to go to work every morning uh, in, in uh, places where there is no um, there, there are there is no guarantee for their health uh, for example we uh, have factories like uh, fiat fca the, the biggest car producer in, here in italy just today they decided to close for a couple of weeks in order to uh, to guarantee the minimal health conditions for their workers. But there are other factors that are still open because there is a struggle uh, right now between workers and the government. The government is trying to, um, to keep the businesses open because otherwise other international competitors uh, could profit of the situation, especially um, the U UK, USA, because they are uh, acting in a very different way, and the workers uh, who are trying to impose their uh, first need, the need to save their, their own life. So this is an important struggle, and we in the last day assisted to wild, wild, um, wild cut strikes all over the, uh, the country in large and uh, small uh, businesses, factories, offices, call centers. Uh, there is a quite, a, um, I would say, a, a mass uh, insubordination from the workers because they want to just to defend their own lives and the life of their, um, uh, their families, their, um, uh, their families. And the, the situation is more complicated because there is a, a quite big contradiction because you cannot go out uh, to have also to have a walk, you can, but police can stop you. And uh, there are something like 6,000 uh, cases against people who are found in the streets while just walking. But you can you cannot go out walking, but you have to go to work. Right. And so this is an important contradiction because the life and the profits are not on the same side. You have to choose to defend the first one, the, the, the health of our own people or the profits of few uh, businessmen. Right. So uh, going a bit back, I mean, now there is a call for, of course, a, a solidarity at a national level. We have seen a lot of gestures of this kind of solidarity, people singing, for instance, in the balconies. And there has been an outpouring of support from people across the world. But to take a few steps backward, in back in terms of the overall approach to public health itself, 
Do you think that the situation right now is also reflective of a certain lack of planning that uh, hit Italy's public health system? Yeah, absolutely, yes. There, there, were, there are structural problems and contingent problems because uh, the coronavirus was undervaluated when there were the first cases. Uh, every politician uh, was just going in TV just to say, uh, to tell people it's okay, it's normal, just a flu, no, 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 problems, no problems at all. We are not China, we will not have any problems here in Italy. In a few days, and you can read the declaration, the statements of the politicians in the government, national government, local level, uh, you can read the change uh, of the, also the communication. Now it's a pandemic uh, all over the world. Uh, it's declared pandemic by OMS, and uh, the situation is changed. But the structural problem is still here, because in the last 20 years uh, we faced a, a very uh, tough uh, austerity measures imposed by Italian government, by European Union, by uh, international monetary fund, by in, in transnational uh, institutions. In the health system, uh, uh, they meant uh, we closed a lot of hospitals, uh, about quite uh, almost 400 hospitals and structures were closed. Uh, we have we lack 70,000 workers in the health national systems the system, and we uh, um, have destroyed uh, the national uh, health system. Uh, that is, is, is still str struggling because it was a, an important conquest by the people, by the workers in, this, in the 70s, and it's still here, but uh, we have many, many problems, uh, in, for, especially in the South, because also there is, a, that we have not one, a unique national system, we have 20 different systems because of the so-called federalism, so it's very difficult to have a centralized plan strategy. And that it, 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 we will need it right now, but we, can, we cannot have in a in, in, in few days. Basically, we lack personnel, we lack structures. Uh, the, the, the money went to the private clinics and not to the public. And we have not, a, we have a, a culture of prevention. We, we are trying to impose a different culture in, even in the health system. Uh, based on prevention, uh, like I don't know, in Cuba, a small country, a small island, but there uh, the, the health the, the health is uh, is guaranteed to the to the people. Here is very different, and there is another problem. We have seen it uh, also in other countries. Italy is not producing uh, the, um, uh, the 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 uh, medicines. We, we, we are not produced produce the medical machines, so we have we are obliged to buy them on the market. But the problem right. is that right now no one wants to sell these products to uh, to Italy. So we will need a national industry able to uh, safeguard the health of our people. These are structural problems. They are right. not, they are not uh, due to the center-left government that we have right now, neither to the Lega government a few uh, months ago. It's a, 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 the, the problem is that we had 20 years of austerity, and especially in the last 10 years, we lost 37 billions of euros that were not uh, put into the health national system. And we are facing right. this situation because of our politicians and because of the, of the austerity. Right. So uh, a key question is, in such times, how do the leftist and progressive organizations also respond to uh, an, an issue like this? So there is, of course, the larger demand for the reversal of austerity. But there are also, I understand, ground-level interventions which your organization has been making. So could you talk a bit about that? Yeah, uh, we started to... Uh, we started from the basic needs from the people because people is very worried because they have uh, daily needs who are not able to to meet and so we as a national organization started to uh, with few i will say services we call it mutualism mutual aid uh, we offer our help 
in order to buy food for elder people who cannot go out uh, from their houses, also because they are uh, the most vulnerable people uh, uh, in the country. And we offered our help in order to uh, guard, guard, guard uh, ch ch children because many <laughs> parents uh, are uh, obliged to go to work. So the schools are closed, universities are closed, and the, the children are alone in the houses. Uh, we are interrupting this service because right now the situation is worse than in the past, so we cannot uh, go easily uh, into the right. houses of other people. And we started with another uh, service, service of mutual aid. We call it Red Phone. Uh, basically, it's, uh, uh, we have few, uh, four lines and we are asking workers to call us uh, to uh, have an el help uh, to clarify the situation, to have legal aid, because many bosses are uh, simply abusing of the situation. For right. example, they oblige workers to go to work and they stay at, and bosses stay at home. Or, or, they oblige uh, workers to work even in, um, without any, and when I say any, I mean any um, DPE, that the individual protection uh, uh, mean. And so we, we, we had, uh, in a week, we had uh, something more than 100 uh, phone calls from all over Italy, from the factories, from call centers, from workers without any contract. They are the first one to pay the crisis because the crisis right. is on their shoulders and they are going to be fired. And without a contract, you cannot also demonstrate you, are, you were in uh, at that work workplaces. So uh, workers are very hit by this crisis, but in terms of health and in terms of uh, their own job. So we, we are trying to help our own people and to defend uh, the people uh, also because the government is not doing uh, whatever they can in order to prevent the disease, in order to help. So has there been any policy response by the government, especially on the issue of the kind of, yeah, the kind of problems workers are facing, especially those in the precarious sector, the gig economy, for instance? Uh, about the gig economy, they did nothing, <laughs> quite nothing. There are a few decrees I, I, was, uh, I was saying before, but um, basically they uh, oblige to go, the, they suggest to the bosses to uh, put the workers on vacations. Obviously, the vacations are a right of the workers and they, in, in the future, they will not have the right to go on vacation in August, for example, if we are going out from the emergency, because right. they are obliged to go on vacation right now mm -hmm. in order to, to let the bosses close uh, the workplaces. And uh, in order of smart working, the agile worker, wor um, agile and uh, smart working, uh, the government is suggesting, but it's all just suggesting, they are not obliging. Uh, right. bosses. They are suggesting bosses to concede, to give to the workers the chance yeah. of um, um, working from their own houses. But many bosses, we are at different calls on, on this matter, and many bosses are just uh, re uh, refusing to concede smart working, both because they have not the technologies to guarantee that workers can work from their own, from their own right. houses, and both because they want to control their workforce. They want the, the, their own workforce in the offices, in the factories, because they have to check if they produce or not. Right. So, and there are other uh, measures that, uh, that the government is, is applying. For example, they are going, uh, today they are going to approve another decree and it, it should uh, guarantee uh, more funds in order to um, to give uh, something like a basic income for people who are out of the of the right. uh, jobs, and we are pushing for it because right. uh, the crisis is, has not to put on the shoulders of uh, the the workers. Right. Thank you so much, Giuliano, for joining us and talking to us at this point. Thanks to you. That's all we have time for today. Keep watching People's Dispatch. Yeah,